this portion come before city council uh, a couple of times before um uh, this is the what's in here is to propose propose changes to what's already in the code this is um, there, there's some things in here that changing some of the language to match match uh, state statute and things like that uh, but for the most part we're removing unnecessary requirements uh streamlining the process and making business licensing more friendly there's um, some of these provisions in here we no longer do. Um, you know, they're they're outdated for various reasons, and um, so from that perspective, uh, we're asking for council to consider these changes. Um, we are also reorganizing some of these topics, uh, trying to put them more in line with um, you know how we have formatted some of the the rest of the code and some of those changes. Uh, we're standing standardizing some of the nomenclature that we have in there so you know we're referring to licensing officials and things like that uh, the same way within every topic um, so i will go through these real quickly on a high level and then if you have specific things within the ordinance that you have questions about um, we can go from there and i thought Catherine was going to attend but i don't know uh, where she is, so hopefully there aren't too many legal questions. Uh, so under auctioneers, uh, we're removing uh, this chapter completely um, under uh, section 5.24, trash, garbage, uh, refuse, and rubbish collection. Uh, we're removing the section around um, uh, vehicle inspections. Uh, we don't have the staff for the, the capabilities to do those individual vehicle inspections. Uh, junk dealers were recommending that that is deleted. Uh, we don't have uh, junkyards as a permitted use within the city limits, so uh, it makes sense to remove junk dealers. Uh, merchant patrol and security guards. Um, uh, that's going to be updated and moved to section 5.08. Um, one of the big changes there is we currently license both the company as well as each individual security guard. Uh, our proposal is to remove the individual licenses for the security guards and only license the company. Uh, the company itself could be uh, doing those background checks and checking on their own security guards. And there's one little section in there that is still in there about fingerprinting that I think we missed pulling out, but we, okay. I'm going to ask to have that pulled out. I just caught it on the like 18th time I went through this. So I'm going to ask. I just didn't do that before tonight because I didn't want it to change before we got here. So thank you. Uh, Pawnbrokers, um, a lot of this is changing. The definitions have changed at the state level. So uh, matching our language to be uh, equivalent to the states. Also, our, we're less restrictive than the state. We can't be less restrictive than the state. So um, bringing us in compliance with Colorado Revised Statute. Uh, peddlers, solicitors, and canvassers. Uh, this is, again, this is some nomenclature changing. So, um, you know, differences commercial versus non commercial uh, solicitors, canvassers. Um, uh, obviously, we, from a free speech standpoint, uh, the non commercial canvassers, we uh, we can't regulate them um, in the same way we can for commercial solicitors. Uh, so, uh, that gets clarified in uh, that section. Should I ask a question now about that subsection? Or I marked and on page twenty four of the ordinance. I wasn't sure if I was reading it. Like it, it sound, I read to me as if if there's a no solicitation sign of some sort posted, that none of these folks of any category should approach. But if I'm not mistaken by law, if for religious, they don't have to follow the no solicitor. It's just for the yeah. um, merchandise yeah. and actual And I've product. heard that that's true. And I, that's why I wondered if it had to do with the free speech stuff. But I've heard the same thing as true for political purposes. <clears throat> and I, I wanted to be sure whatever we intend this to be and or however it is in the state statute, that we'll make that clear. But page 24 read to me as if if you got that sign posted, then no one can approach. Such as the fire in the 
It makes it sound like I wonder if they change that statewide. <laughs> I am unsure. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel either. That will be a section we'll have to follow up with the uh, attorneys on. Yeah. 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 They may enter with a no solicitation sign if they had an invitation or appointment. Right, which is not. It's like a total right. transition. Right, right. So that kind of says no, they don't want them otherwise. They can't just walk in. We I, think can, I think that's what we will. Uh, yeah, we, we can get that clarified um, and answered for you. Yeah, I have that mark to ask. Because I'm unsure. I thought that was the rule also, but that's definitely what I read. I also have a question on 5.14, but I'm happy to wait or I'm happy to ask now. I'm not sure what your preference is. I was just wondering. Yeah. If there... <laughs> she didn't make it down until the camera broke. Yeah. Somebody just napped at us. Maybe it's the I tell them, have you got one? <clears throat> get that dumb look, like probably by the time giving them. But it's one of those to where I've told them, but it's like, if that happens, and I'm pretty sure they haven't, should I, who should I call but, you? And I actually contacted my company after I talked to the company. Um, I let the officers know that I've talked to that company, and if they get interested in another call, then they're absolutely fine to find it. These guys may contact the company. I love when they come to my door. They're like, Sign uh, in your it's a it's on a corner on Main Street. He's got it right up on his name. It says no peddlers, no preachers, no politics. <laughs> okay. uh, going back to the uh, section two of the ordinance. It also establishes the staff members of the working places. Uh, those of you who choose the licenses of uh, uh, 
um, Harvard Deacon. <clears throat> Their question is that they got more than this. The application of this and that, and now it's in one section. My life much easier to deal with the end of it so I can understand what this is to have been right for. Yes. <laughs> Last section is licensing. Happy to see you here. Uh, it seems like from our last conversation, it's necessary to make sure that people in the industry that the affected is contracted as the next thing. Although, when yeah, I, I, I made plans that. On page three, that uh, transfer of authority uh, that says, says that the license valid has to be issued. What I've done in there is that it's for anything other than that. It's a final one. Um, then, then I've got a question on your conversation. And would you say that license is part of the conversation? So, the, what, what my concern is there. So the, it seems to me that the appropriate to say from the day of service. So, so the question is here is if jail has some kind 
you know, holidays and all that kind of or stuff. Or it's a free <clears throat> Where these are actually calendar days. The orders were given the first three days. That was similar question. Three days. So that so that you know if we're if we're just right. Yeah. 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 It's certified mail. They have to see. Right. Whatever that may be. Somebody else has some comments. Um, and we're talking about the security guard service, but that was. We're no longer licensed. It's not. Okay. So I'm going to ask the team because that was a miscommunication idea. Starting with such a. And then, then above that, Says that each stockholder or whatever. Remember, see, like an LLC, right? No, it's a, it's a member. LLC would be a member and LLP. I guess. Uh, and then and probably the bottom we need to report it correctly. And should we so if we're denying somebody a license, should there be <coughs> lots of boxes? Such say what that Whatever, whatever. <laughs> 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 So you know, having having that defined a little better, I think, would be nice. My other So, cyber 
And, um, and that's a great thing that it should come up the, uh, the, uh, the, we say at the beginning, we say the character and representation of the And then that, that number two is it's like there's a 10 year period and then a five year period, and they're two different things when they pass up. And then some additional adjustments to this one yeah that might not even need to be in there because that will go with the background check that we're not doing for our company per se where we were doing it for the individual licensees before and so i don't know if that would then also need to come out i'm not sure it's interesting though because it's i mean specific to the partner managing officer stockholder oh that's true uh -huh. so and like those people i guess could have these things mm -hmm. so, but i vote Catherine question Okay, I've got a question mark on that also. Okay. Okay. Yeah, on the next page, we're under page seven, under D, security guard must supply and provide photos of uniforms. The If we're going to require photos of uniforms, is it is it would it be appropriate to require photos of the, of the guards, of the uh, security officers? Security guards. I'll tell you, they change so often. Yeah, frequently. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, it's physical description of security guards, which right. again, if they change all the time, like it, it does seem really odd that you would have mm -hmm. one without the other. That's true. So maybe either take out physical description if they change that much. I mean. I honestly, you know, we had one company that over the past year had 17 different guards 17. because they share them amongst Colorado Springs, Pueblo mm -hmm. And so they rotate, it's the sure. banks, the banks all have them, but they rotate them so much that we truly were licensing 17 people for one location because they might be here once every six months. It's a little crazy. A little crazy. Yeah. The, um, Okay. Well, maybe maybe consider. I, I don't know if that's if that's really too much brain damage for those of the guards. Uh, then at the bottom there we say the uh, the police of chief uh, the chief of police shall regulate the style of all ba badges, and don't we mean approve? Don't we want him to approve? What does it mean that he's going to regulate? Maybe you'll know, only say something with the problem instead of having to go through. Okay, I approve this, I approve this. Yeah, because you this. don't want them saying, you know, they're, they're not going to say police on them. Yeah, but right. Say, but he can intervene if there's a problem. Okay. Or he could come up with a policy like it needs to follow the burden of the time. So I was just, just the word regulate was kind of hanging me up there. Which, which should... letter is that on? C. E. E. Thank you. Eight, seven. It's kind of in the middle. The police, of, uh, the chief of police, shall regulate the style of all badges, uniforms, and equipment. I think it's better than approved. I wouldn't want you to have to throw out the blue. Like, yeah, right. yeah. No, no, no. It seems like an unnecessary burden. 
Well, with with some of this in here on their application, you would ask them to put that stuff, and I mm. send all of the security guard applications it's, to the police yeah, department. Part of the packet so goes to the chief. I'm planning on putting in the packet there the mm -hmm. you know specific parts to it. Um, so I mean, approving he they're just saying yeah that's okay their company's fine, or, and and we do that a lot so they know they're here for one. Um, but then they would be able to see those things also. So I don't know if that would work with approved since he's approving the packet as a whole, the company as a whole. Um, I think it would also worry about yeah, legally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then on the next page, page eight, the transfer of the license. Uh, and we go into a whole <laughs> bunch of kind of pulling ourselves through knot holes here to kind of give somebody a pre-approval if they want to acquire a license, as I understand that paragraph. And so I'm saying, why? What do yeah. we need that? This does this, I got a hunch that this happened before and somebody wanted to know for sure the city was going to approve them before they bought it or something like that. But let them go through the licensing process process. Why not? Why have a pre-approval thing? Yeah. And I I believe this is all existing language in the code. It's okay. just being moved, which is why it's showing up as new. Uh, that's not so, a question. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, unless there's some concern that there would be a gap in service for a bank or whatever. Mm -hmm. Something in one day and there wasn't something in this place. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts or any history? On that part, no. Because we, we had one company that changed hands last year and they just applied for a new one and we we just flopped all the people over, um, all their guards. We didn't make them redo everything. We just had the company redo it because the guards were all the same. Um, and we just flopped it that way. Um, maybe it's okay to leave in and then maybe it just doesn't get used to it. There's some unusual circumstances. I don't know. I'm good with that, but I, we're, you know, we we don't, if we got something we don't need, I'm always in favor of getting it out. Me but too. That's <laughs> all about less is more if I can. Uh, and then on the top of page nine, the, the, uh, we're talking about how uh, licenses, revocation, and it's the set the appeal process quite. Mm -hmm. And then switching to trash haulers, mm -hmm. the uh, compensation. Oh, it's got that. We got that. Okay, it says um, compensation means any money, property, service, or things of value charged or received or to be charged or received to be charged and to be to be received also. <clears throat> Would be clearer. They're going to have that many orders to have the proposition in front of both of them. So. Okay, just a question there. Then I have a question on the next page. Anybody else has something? Chime in as we go on. What, what were you reading when you read this? <laughs> And see, if you say review it, I review it. <laughs> yeah. So you're okay. on page 10? I am on page 10, and okay. we're looking at number two under B. Okay. okay, a person who transports trash or recycles. Say, the following persons are not required to obtain a trash haulage license. A person who transports trash or recyclable materials produced by such person, or shouldn't it say, or immediate family member? I mean, if my wife tells me to take out the trash, you know, the, I don't want to be in violation of the code here. The so person or their immediate family is that what you're immediate family is that what immediate family such well, person's household maybe household is all the right you know that might be that's a friend yeah yeah I mean that that leaves it wide open so right I mean, such person. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that would destroy our entire neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the old underground trash on that's what you're And then under number four, we talk about trash other than garbage. And have we defined those? Do we know what the definition of those are? Is what's trash versus garbage? I believe they are defined in the they in the code. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then under as well as rubbish. Okay, great. <laughs> Good. Number five, we're talking about the people that provide lawn services, yard services. And I I would suggest that we add after produces yard rubbish that we add earthen materials there too because sometimes they haul off earthen materials. What materials and earthen? earthen? Wouldn't that fall under general yard, garden, and organic waste material? Well, we're, we have a pretty comprehensive list. Well, maybe say inorganic and organic. Like, what, sorry, what do you think wouldn't be covered by general yard, garden, and organic waste? Dirt. Dirt. <laughs> Yeah. And we 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 are talking about branches to express. I mean, we give a comprehensive list, but we don't mention dirt really, and that's why I say that'd be appropriate to add earthen materials here. Yard and on that one, just so you know, 5.10.030 on page 11, I'm asking on number one and two. I thought she said something about we, per state requirement, we weren't supposed to do those things any longer. I'm not sure. I'm going to double check with her. I thought she was going to be here tonight, so I was going to ask that question, but okay. that may or may not be in there next time. I'm not sure what the requirements are. I just remember it came up somehow, and I don't quite recall the whole conversation. So I'm going to double check that little section too. Okay, uh, just above that, number seven, we say the city or city or employees in the performance of their duty are not required to obtain a trash haulage license. Uh, the so that the, would that cover because because our water department are city employees that does you guys are would be covered under that. What about our other special districts like the rec? district or something like that are we that's not under that we're they they would be required to get a license i mean what they were hauling i would i mean if they were hauling all the trash for a district yes for their building no because that would be then creating their own trash we, we can we can ask about you know, i can see where we go to the regulator um, we regulate our own people. So we might need an opportunity to participate in that. If you will be some responsible for the years, right? And, that, and I'm, I'm good with that. I was, it's, I got the, it just, you know, as I was reading it, I was thinking of like the rec district and, you know, the, if we're giving exemptions, is it appropriate to think about them or not? And not as fun. I don't think they, I think they the keep, mm -mm, mm -mm. they, I think they, like most of us, keep dumpsters and have them haul all their trash. Mm -hmm. Because for most of us, that is the easier way to go. Can I ask about number six? Um, the person hauling trash is the city's agent pursuant to an incentive abatement action. Do we not typically use either a city employee or a licensed trash hauling company? And if so, who do we use? We usually contract with a, a provider, but you know, many times that provider is, it's not necessarily a trash hauler. Depending um, on size and time and what yeah, it is. What's being abated. Because some of them, they can't haul. But it could be a licensed contractor. Then the um, on the last page 12, it says the trash haul truck must be fitted with a good and substantial water. So that should be, should that be substantially watertight? It doesn't have to be, you know. 
So a substantial watertight container. A, a substantial watertight container is one that is hefty. Yeah. Okay. Substantially watertight is one that has to be substantially watertight. Watertight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think this so I think that's the right wording. Yep. Okay. I'm good with that. If it's substantially watertight, that's just not it leaks. It leaks. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Okay. And then on page 14, well, let's see, then what are we talking about? Pawnbrokers. Uh, Sorry, John, do you mean, I had a more macro level about sure. on more macro level question about pawnbrokers. It seemed to me like this was the one section where there actually are additional requirements to mm -hmm. get in line with um, new state law. Or at least like substantial changes that are just removing. We had to change plans. a bunch of verbiage to make it equal the state. And I think we did have to bring something <laughs> because we did less than what the state required to begin with. So I was just wondering about this in particular if um, you had already had interactions with the workers as they were coming in and if so how those conversations went given that this is one where there are the one pawnbroker we had is no longer in business. I have had a new pawnbroker tell me they're coming into business and I told them to check everything out online. But at the moment, we wouldn't have one because the only one we had was on Main Street and he went out of business. Um, he was very good and complied with all the stuff and was came to <laughs> meetings about doing the online stuff. Um, and most most places that they've done it anywhere else right. that is required of them yeah. and has been because we're I about three years behind to be honest on changing that state requirements. Is that the um, street? Main Street. It was the Main Street one that went out. Matt will check the there's one right here on Third Street. Now yes, but okay. I think at one point they weren't doing. There's only certain things that go under the pawn broker. It gets real muddy. And so even though some of them, it seems like you would have to have a license when I check it, they don't, because it has to be things with serial numbers and different, there's different parts to it. So really, we only had one last year. It's not like a consignment. No, it's not consignment. Totally different. If it's not of a certain value, has serial numbers, there's very specific things about it. Because that was a deep conversation we had with the attorneys about who, because I give a list, I'm like, who on this list would be like? And we at the time had one. And like I said, I know one has came in. They have contacted me and I told them, hold, hold, we're getting there. And so um, I did tell them to look at everything online and let me know if they had any questions with changes that we were looking at. And I did not hear back from So Thank you so much. So yeah. this end of the table, would then maybe we just discussed it while we were being rude and talking amongst themselves. But there was a pond right there on Third Street, just uh, north of the highway. On the chasms, right behind the chasms. Yeah. That's a good part there. Third Street Pond. Um, I don't know. And I know there was discussion on one, but it was the stuff they had that wasn't considered. Okay. okay. Because I don't think they had anything that fit the parameters about. We'll, we'll double check that. We'll double check, yes. And once. This goes in because I always get the information and then I, I get my list and I check <laughs> because I don't know what a lot of them, even though they say pawn, it doesn't automatically mean they have to have a, one of these licenses. Okay. That's just for broker. It's for certain level of stuff that okay. has serial numbers, a certain worth. There was quite a, like five or six parameters they have to hit. And that might have been one at the time that they didn't have it. I don't remember though, to be honest. It makes sense. Okay. Okay. On page 14, under tangible personal property, says means all personal property other than chooses an action. That may be a lawyer question. What the heck does that mean? It's some that, weird legal term. No idea. I have no idea. And I, and I know that she changed it all to the state terminology, which also kind of muddies it for us sometimes. There, there may be a very good and sufficient reason that it says we'll, that. We'll but, figure out what that means. <laughs> I saw that too. Okay. Uh, and then on page 16 D, any police officer, and it says um, where it talks about appeal down towards the bottom and it says city administrator, uh, should that be the licensing official? Just a question. So, but it's also the general question. D. If, 
D at the kind of towards the end. And writing for Lisa the article to the city administrator. I would think that it, you would want to have the person who it is being appealed to to be somebody above the licensing official. Mm -hmm. the licensing yes, yes, we yes, would. Yes, that's that's, typ that's, that's typically the way it works. Yes. And, that's fine with me. That's fine with me. <laughs> and I appreciate that wholeheartedly. <laughs> okay. And then I just have a real minor change. Wait, um, above section 15.14.090, which I'm not sure where that is on the page. Uh, 090 is on 24. Page 24. Uh, and right above that, it says a licensed individual, and I think it means licensed. Mm. And that's, that's all I got. All right. Anybody else? Thank God, I'm covered in. <laughs> 800 last time I was clocked. <laughs> so, one question before we move on it's not necessarily about the ordinance itself, but um, does council like the way these are being proposed with the ca all caps versus the red line? I prefer the red line. I just think you prefer the red lines. I'm good. Either. Just so it's clear with the memo to just what the changes are. Prefer the red line? It doesn't matter. Okay. I, mean, I, I kind of like the red line. The red line meaning like using track changes. Yeah. Yes. The problem the problem that you get is when you move a whole section to another, right. you're just changing yeah. numbers. You get a whole bunch of red lines. But then it shows up as a different color because it's been moved. Whereas with this, it's just in all caps, and I don't know if it's new or if it's mm -hmm. just been moved. Yeah. So I feel like you actually get more information. Mm -hmm. I'm good with red. Thank you. Okay. So we're moving on to lead and copper pipes. And Cindy, do you want these? I think I've got them all okay. written down and I'm okay. gonna get it. I'm gonna try to get it out even before the next meeting on Hunter and answer some questions. So because you know, then we're on a little tighter uh, deadline if I want to get the licenses by March. So Thank you, I you. will hand this over to Travis and talk about the state, uh, well, EPA uh, lead and copper rule and where we're going from here. Yeah, so I just kind of wanted to give an update and excuse me for the unpolished PowerPoint. <laughs> here we are. Time is what it is. <laughs> it's too busy answering calls. Yeah. I know, right? Copper and copper color. What's that? <laughs> I know, right? I just really need, I thought about doing some explosions and smiley <laughs> faces. And oh, this isn't horrible. This is okay. All right, letting copper roll. So uh, this is much larger than what we're going to talk about today. What I'm trying to focus on is the inventory aspect of the lead and copper rule because that's what is um, important in, in this time. The other aspects of it, such as sampling and monitoring um, and, and, and stuff of that nature is, is for later. So EPA first established the lead and copper rule in 91. Um, and sorry, to reduce exposure to lead and copper in water. The contaminants are probably primarily uh, enter Drinking water through the corrosion of service lines, fixtures, or plumbing. EPA has revised the rule multiple times since 91 and published lead and copper rule revisions on January 15, 21. The LCRR became effective on December 16, uh, 2021. So you might ask, why are we talking this in, about this in 2023? Again, sorry. EPA recently announced that it tends to further revise its regulation on lead and water. The lead and copper rule improvements are expected before October 24. So what they're proposing to change will happen before October 24. So everybody's kind of waiting to see what revisions are before uh, we hammer out a bunch of work and then they're not going to accept that. Uh, but utilities should not wait for these new changes to begin communicating about lead. So that's why we're trying to do what we can with what we got now. 
the LCRI may change uh, the action and trigger levels, cap sampling procedures, and lead service line replacement requirements may also place greater emphasis on prioritizing historically disadvantaged communities. EPA says these changes will no, be no less strict than the current LCRR. So we're not going to catch a break with anything. <laughs> we're just waiting to see how much more strict we're going to get. Okay. So one of those things, though, that um, we're waiting to see is that lead service line replacement requirements, because we're waiting to see what percentage they're going to put on entities to replace per year. You know, is it going to be 3%, 5%, 10%? How quickly are they going to expect people to replace their lead service lines? But we need to know what we got. But we need to know what we got first. Um, so Colorado Department of Public Health is still working on the state rules. So when Colorado takes privacy over the drinking water regulations, there are some states that let the EPA dictate what happens. Colorado is a state that has privacy. So they decided they're going to take uh, over um, how, how all these rules get put in place. So they're going through, EPA released their rule. They have to uh, interpret how they feel like the rule should be put in place and they're going to put out their own rule. They're still working on that. Uh, they're currently holding stakeholder meetings that I've been uh, attending virtually. Uh, they're expected to come out with their rule quarter four 23. So that's why we're talking about this now and not way back in 21, because everybody's been waiting in Colorado to see, well, how are they going to interpret what the EPA has put out? Is, is this just from us to the house or is it the house? Too? We'll be getting there. <laughs> yeah. We're about one slide away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's how Colorado interprets EPA's rules. Does it, do they have um, leeway in terms of making it more or less strict? Or so just... when a state uh, comes out and they say they want primacy, they cannot be a little less strict, but okay. they can be more strict. Okay. Yep. The EPA has programs to review state programs. Right. So yeah, they cannot be less strict, but they can be more strict. Okay. So one of the things that everybody has been waiting for is how are they going to define galvanized and needing to be replaced? Okay, so what they've actually said now is, we'll go to the next one, it'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so this is a service line. Okay, so you have a property boundary, if you can follow my mouse. Um, maybe it'll help if I walk up there. I have a fan of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have property boundary. Um, so this is where your street would be, your main, uh, you have a gooseneck, and you have a public side. Public side generally, and we fall into this, just goes to about property uh, boundary. So the way we have it defined in our code is, is first valve and turn off. And so generally that's going to be in the meter pit, or if the meter is inside the house, it's going to be a curb stop in the yard. So we are responsible up into that curb stop or meter pit. Okay, so that's public. So when we say public side, we're responsible for that. Private side is from that into foundation. We are going to be responsible for all of that. So to answer your question, this is the brand new side of the lead copper rules. Before we were only responsible for public side. This is now putting us um, responsible for private side as well for replacements and to know what 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 it is. So the inventory aspect, what is the material? Okay. So there's going to be uh, four right now, but it might go down to three. The four categories are going to have non-lead, lead galvanized and galvanized and needing to be replaced. So the one that might go away is galvanized. So a definition of galvanized need to be replaced is <laughs> they may have galvanized on their side, but what the state wants to see is, can you ever prove that there was never lead above that? So what was this part of the service line, okay? Unfortunately, our records going back when we replace our side, so we did not replace a galvanized side. We've never said we replaced galvanized service line. We say we replaced service line. Mm -hmm. So we don't have proper documentation to say we did not, that could not have ever not been led. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of convoluted, but does that make sense? Is there a, a lead issue or historically was there a lead issue at all in the distribution lines before even? Yes, from the street and no, generally not. So lead uh, is generally used on small diameter pipes. So I think it's like you generally don't see it over two inch, and, and I think is generally what it is. Yeah. And what you can have on really old uh, pipes is sometimes they they finesse scrap it with lead, but generally that's very small now because we're very old pipes. So you don't generally see it in uh, drinking water until it's gone through, and that's the response. 
only issue is that if it ever was left before, then the galvanized from the bank would have any there. So. so then the state is going to treat those galvanized in need of your replacement as a lead service line. So where we don't <laughs> expect to find that many lead service lines on uh, private side, we are aware that there's probably some we don't know where they're at, but we know there's probably some on Main Street. Uh, it was an old section of town in that kind of era of building in our, in our town. There probably is still some private side lead service lines. We don't, don't know where they are because we've never had to pay attention to it, right? So, um, so we're 99% sure that we don't have any on our side. So, Travis, what I, the, I'm, I'm a little confused. Galvanized is a zinc coat, <clears throat> not a lead coat, correct? Yes. So, what, so galvanized itself is not lead. Right. Yeah. Then, so, so what's what? So what? What's the issue then? Um, as far as galvanized needing to be replaced, yeah, I cannot go into any further detail of why they decided that galvanized uh, being downstream downstream lead is a bad thing. Is that the? I'm trying to remember the, the situation in was it in Michigan where? Well, I don't think um I don't want to get into it a whole ton of tunnel or what happened in Michigan, but my understanding of it, but I believe I might be able to speak more eloquently about it is so when you um have less service lines and they what they did is they switched their water source um, when yes. you had that plant Michigan yes. issue. They went from a water source that was relatively uh, well, on the basic side. So it was creating more and more of a film, right? Mm -hmm. And so they switched to the Flint River water source that was more acidic. So when they finally, you know, when they started putting that through the system, it, it started to leach into that. Plus all the cover up stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, copper. Uh, copper is what we use on our side. We don't uh, decay with what private side we use. So generally, they'll use like a pack soap or copper or something. What's the purpose of the boost net? Does that give you flexibility? It is. So the copper that we use is rigid copper. Um, so then, you know, when you have a tap in vein, it's at 45. So you don't want it to catch any possible uh, rust or anything. You also don't want to catch air. So it's at a 45, and then a rigid will go over 45. So you have to have a piece that can provide that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. I have a stupid question, but you knew I was going to ask it. Um, are we? <laughs> is this for all of the city, or is it just for your water department? Uh, so it's for the. Like our city has a large section that is not served by a city water. And oh, yeah, you, we would not be responsible for that. So that then the Park Center will be responsible for that. So we're but, responsible for our water district. Okay. Yeah. Within the district. So Within the district. Serious. That's bigger than the city. Yeah. yeah. So we'll be county, but it, yeah, it won't be. But it, won't be it won't be us, our part of town. You're so well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but. <laughs> But they will have the same requirement. Yes. Tra Travis, can you talk a little bit more about the private service line and where that responsibility stops? Are we stopping at the foundation? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, not necessarily at the foundation. So it's the first um, first connection is at the foundation. So whether it be a turn off or an ID or first connection, please. Yeah, first connection that side. Mm -hmm. So I mean that that. You know, once we get into the replacement aspect of things, you know, that wouldn't be city staff necessarily doing the whole work because now we have that power to do that. We're not going to have city staff inside of, of people's houses doing that, that work. And we need to be, I guess, if there's enough of them, maybe we can hire one currently for a certain amount of time, something to figure out, or, you know, more than likely have um, somebody that we can contact them. The issue is going to be is if you have a lead line that goes runs inside a house, you likely have lead pipes throughout the house. That's correct. Sir. So then you just go to the first first stop first. Where where is that's, that? That's for yeah. For right. responsibility. Yeah. So is there responsibility to inventory it? Initially, it's going to be inventory, and so the slide that I had a couple back where we're waiting to see. Okay, so once we have an inventory, how many lead you have and galvanized can be replaced would be considered lead as well. Um, 
we're waiting to see what percentage do you have to replace those three units. So we will have to be uninsured. So the way it's been put out in EPA and and kind of the general understanding of, of what they want is um, we can't do a partial service line replacement. We have to be full to the foundation, but we don't have to pay for it. And that's as far as it's gone. What does that mean? Like, you know, it's gonna be potentially yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, in some in some form, we're gonna have to, right? Because if we're gonna be mandated to play service lines, I just don't see any way of of forcing um, any of our any of our customers to pay for a hundred thousand dollars, and I just don't think they'll see it happen. Millions of dollars. Correct. Yes. Yeah. But maybe there'll be some funds following. Well, um, so that's that'll be. Sorry. <laughs> There's only a few. I'm not going to go. Um, so this is just a quick little. So, uh, like there was in the memo, water department currently has 8,892 service lines, of which 7,228 were built before 1988, the active date for the federal lead ban. So we can do for any of those houses, they're automatically out of, out of the pool. Um, the state and EPA have already said that we don't have to worry about those. It's okay. not lead. Oh, oh, the new ones? Uh, the new ones built after 88. Even yep. if they had lead upstream? Um, so they won't have the whole service line will be, will okay. be unknown, not lead. Oh. Yeah, so when they say upstream, that's what it, that's uh, the entirety of what they're talking about. They're not talking about anything upstream that's connected to a main upstream. Perfect. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 All right, so uh, we have our RFP uh, pretty well ready to roll. We're looking for a company that has the ability, and this is just kind of um, description, nature of the projects, and kind of the first paragraph that I have. So um, I'm not going to read it out loud. You guys can do that. Fully sure, but well, it will is, is kind of hit the high points. So what companies are, are coming in and doing is kind of providing some sort of solution to people like us that it's like, we're not sure how to tackle this. We don't have the staff to be able to go out and look at each individual um, service line to see what they are. Okay, so there's kind of three main uh, accepted ways of, of doing this that, that I kind of know of right now. So you can um, pothole the service line. And so that's that's actually getting eyes on uh, where, where it would be in the ground. Um, you can see where it comes through the foundation, what's the material that comes through the foundation, um, but that's getting in people's houses, right? Or you can um, test like we would for a lead and copper sampling program. You can just test their water and see what the lead uh, result is. And then you can be reasonably assured whether it's a <clears throat> lead service line or not. So what this company can do is, is um, it kind of uses this, data management. So they'll take what limited data we do have and kind of plug it into an algorithm, uh, predictive modeling, and say, okay, in this section of town, you're more likely to have that. So then what we do is then that's where we would target our physical inspections, right? So then we go hot hole, plug it back into the algorithm and, you know, kind of mm -hmm. further, further define all that stuff. So that will be kind of the beginning. What they also can do is provide uh, the sample kits. Uh, they already have all those kind of figured out, um, marketed all that all that good stuff to send to uh, customers and then of course we pay for the sam sampling and everything like that but we don't have to develop all that so any, any spots that might be tricky for us to get in or again we're just not going to have the time or or uh, staff to be able to do all of them um, so we'll do some sampling uh, what else they can do is they can do the public outreach aspect of it so we're going to do education right we're going to do all kinds of education when this is coming so when we say that we can, um, when well, the service line that comes into people's houses, um, the hope would be that it wouldn't be city staff doing that because, you know, there's large population that are never going to let people into their house for multitude of reasons. <laughs> um, so what we would hope to do then is, is uh, do some outreach to them saying, okay, take a picture of it and send it to us. Um, this company provides a uh, um, Kind of repository to be able to hold that kind of data we, we really can't do that again you're talking about thousands you know that's not an excel table <laughs> that's not you know we don't we just don't have that infrastructure to really handle that kind of thing uh, they would they would kind of provide sort of that that stuff so 
kind of an offshoot of that is I had a conversation with Denver Water, who's already kind of gone through this. They popped high on, on lead, and they've already, they're years into doing this already. Um, <clears throat> what they've kind of found is you can you can put out mailers and ask people to do this, but you only get a handful of percent, maybe 10% of your really lucky response rate. What they found more um, success doing is saying, okay, you get 20 bucks off your bill if we get a response. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, you are talking a chunk of money. You know, mm -hmm. Even if you get 5,000, 20 bucks, you're talking, you know, a lot of money there. You're talking 100 grand. So that's a lost revenue. So okay. we're not necessarily paying that. It's just money that's not going in our coffers. I've not spoken with finance about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, she okayed it. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see her. So vote taken. Great. Um, we want 50. <laughs> There's also a cost um, benefit ratio there as well, because 20 bucks is a significant chunk of change. But the cost of actually doing the public outreach and of actually sending somebody into the home yes. could be much more than Well, and you can even take it to the sampling to do a mm -hmm. like cover sample is $30. You know, so, you know, that would be kind of hopefully you can catch a lot of that because then you have what's come to their home, check mark done, you know, so that would be. Uh, well, I think with proper outreach beforehand saying this is coming, this is a legit thing, I promise, you know, uh, we might have a pretty good response rate. I think they said they, they got up to like 50 or 60 percent or something like that in offering. You know, they said, of course, the more funds you offer, the better response rate you get. But they found that 20 is pretty good. You know, that's that's worth a moment of your time to do something. So is there any um, are you are you at all concerned with the wording of the RFP or um, what you will get back given that we don't yet have the Colorado rule and we don't yet have the final. I know that you can't stop and wait, but I guess how how concerned are you that it might be much more restrictive and that this might not actually go far enough in terms of giving you the information that you need to be able to actually comply? So there certainly is a concern there, but what I think it'll still give us plenty of, of really good information mm -hmm. that even if it's not final, at least we'll know where the lead service lines are. So where the state has been iffy about using um, data analytics by itself, they're probably not going to do that. They're not going to say, well, you plugged enough information in and said this whole section of town is okay, but you didn't look at it. They're probably not going to accept that, but that's information we need because we don't have the records. So and even then, if they don't accept it, it's going to be very valuable. The next time they start this conversation again, at least you have the data. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This would be really Step important. So kind of a budgetary estimate I got for a company doing something like that is about 28000 a year. And for the first year, and then it's going to be maintenance after that for a couple of years. The other way to look at that is, is that the reason the companies are out there is because there are municipalities that have already gone through this uh, and areas that have gone through this. And that's why we have established companies that can provide those services. So they have a good idea what, you know, what what's going to Oh, There's a few businesses to go into here. It gets, yeah, yeah. Does that cost estimate cover kind of doing this for the entire city, like having the data analytics done for, sorry, not the entire city, the entire water district? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're aware, and in, in, in that, you know, we we did provide, you know, we have eight thousand connections, so they're they're, they're aware of, of the size of of the municipality. And then, sorry, I just have one more question. Does that um, understanding that we, as a city, will have significant, may have significant fiscal responsibilities um, when it comes to replacement? Does that change the way that you are thinking about additional requests for um, tapping into the city water? Oh. Um, so that is that is a way that some municipalities have chosen to fund is through either water rate increases or additional cap fees. Um, but we have not gone that far as far as a budget mechanism. We'd like to know what we have first before we because we need to know what how how big yeah. a bucket we're going to need. And I, I think I, I mentioned this during the budget process uh, late last year, but you know we're. We're looking at doing water master planning here in the next couple of years. So mm -hmm. having some of this information ahead of time will we'll pl plug into what that master plan is going to look like. Sure. Um, yeah. I was just on a kind of 
different question. It mentioned that when um, waterlines were replaced in the past, that it was only said that it was a waterline that was replaced with specified. Um, is that something that kind of we're now we specify? Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing we're doing now is anytime we can a meter pit replacement, you know, we're, we're so we actually do um, get into customer side or document. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, we're going to do a handful a month, but, you know, we got to get <laughs> educated we can. You know, we do have some, like we have an old league book that's handwritten. <laughs> you know, so we're looking at digitizing that because there are our morsels in there. You know, maybe somebody took the extra time to say we replace a lead service slide back in the third or 50s, excuse me, or 60s, you know, when we're still replacing the lead service slides. Kind of few and far between, but it is in there. So, you know, again, any data that we're going to be able to bring is going to be there. Yeah. That's all being tracked in the cartograph the asset management. It is not currently, but it will be. Yes. <coughs> when did we start back in the future? About what we're replacing? When did Travis start? Yeah. <laughs> about a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, I mean, people didn't know that they needed to, uh, you know, just know this. Hmm. Yeah, but you know, now we know. So we got to do what we, do, what we can. So I think there was one more slide there for. Do you have a lead detect in your system on just your random tests? No, because on our tests, again, we were just always what we have on our side. Mm -hmm. So we were always tier two, which was copper with lead solder. Mm -hmm. So if, they, if you have a copper line prior to 88, they probably used uh, solder with lead in it. Mm -hmm. So that was what stayed deemed as kind of a tier two, tier one being lead, lead service lines. Um, and so it was always tested that. So we've always been very low. Yeah. But in home testing, there's just been nothing, right? As far as a program. Yeah, very, very well. Yeah. Is that something that they will potentially be covering either under the EPA or the Colorado rule? This tier two. Yes, it's it's solder. that's all gone gone away. So now they don't care about the it's either lead or not lead, basically. Yeah, they they don't have those tiers anymore. Um, probably. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's everything that I say is not said. <laughs> What's the issue with galvanized again? Is it per? Is it Oh, is it I think lead? older galvanizing okay. had like lead impurity in oh, the zinc that prior to a certain era. So if it's older, it has some to it. House. <laughs> Nowadays, I think it's pretty much straight zinc. I don't think there's anything to do. I don't think even galvanized will really use it more for service material just because it does kind of turn turn jokes to it. When you're talking mining, you generally talk about lead zinc ores because they occur together. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Right, any more questions for Travis? Yeah, well, there's sorry. <laughs> One more slide. I know. If you did all the okay. the uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. The money shot. <laughs> all right. So once we have, all right, I'm not going to read this word for word, but yeah. my point. But once we have an accurate count of lead and galvanized, need to replace service lines. We do need to come up with a strategy of service line replacement. Will need to be in place. The strategy will need to be for the entire service line from main to foundation, kind of like we're talking. The state will not recognize a partial service line replacement. Like an average cost of three to five thousand for a service line replacement. Even if we just have a thousand service lines identified for replacement, I mean, a total cost of three to five million for service line replacements. So there are federal infrastructure monies available via the state revolving fund. It's the way that Colorado has chosen to uh, distribute the federal infrastructure uh, monies. My meetings with the state and dollars are being recruited at a fifty percent grant, fifty percent long term, per year loan. Several conditions we tied to these dollars, such as by American Davis Bacon. This has driven project costs up to as much as 30%, according to uh, state rev. Another condition may be that the water department uh, may have to have a state approved water conservation plan. <laughs> details of that still trying to figure out. But if they're going to give you money, they want to see a plan in place for conservation. So for, the, for our water system, a conservation plan for Correct. the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And again, I don't know what that would like. Mm -hmm. I have made it that far. So uh, when you talk about long-term debt, just as an aside, because this is going to be more where you guys come in, you know, the water department does currently have long-term debt where we have about seven and a half million uh, from certificates certifications that were issued in 97, uh, originally issued in 97, reissued in 2008, again, 2017, originally about the global point two million. Those will mature in 2032, so they were a 15-year um, 
timeline. So we're glad we've done, you know, how much long-term debt are we going to accept to try to get as much done with those dollars? Because yes, it drives up 30%, still 20% back, you know, free money, not free, but grant money, you know? So when you're talking millions of dollars, that's still millions of dollars of, of available money, even if it does drive up project costs using those funds and you get to do a lot more quicker. And that will be uh, kind of an important thing because there are a lot of requirements that are going to be put in place once uh, the rule does go in for replacement. Um, not to get into them too much, but one of the wilder ones is if you replace a uh, lead service or galvanized knee replace, you need to um, give them like a Brita style pitcher filter with six months worth of filters. Mm -hmm. So that that's the cost, right? Yeah, and I'm sure you guys have. That was it. They declined the private side. That was oh, what they did in Michigan. They, was if, oh, really? if they wouldn't let you on your property, you Which, had to provide them oh, uh, in-house filter. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what I don't know the reasoning behind giving them filters after we replace it, but there is. So there is um, things of that nature that would be nice not to have to do. So this might be in what you've already covered, but I'm just trying to think. Of, um, is there a way of looking? A way of looking at the housing stock in all canyon cities, you know, certain neighborhoods are certain age mostly. Uh, otherwise, I mean, there could be a replacement house here and there, but it seems like you could get kind of a fair estimate by just saying, we know we have this many houses built before whatever, and then this many in a certain age. Yeah, we do have historical knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. institutional knowledge, and a better way to put it of where. You know, you have South Canyon, old South Canyon, you know, it's built around that, that same era. You have downtown uh, standing up maybe six or seven blocks that could be a source of lead. But as you go further north, um, you're probably not going to have lead. We had a lot of houses built in the 50s and 60s. I don't know how they. And that's when lead. kind of when lead started going out of the yeah. I, I do have another one that I've got to go with. Yeah. 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 No. And it seems like that sort of information would be that into the data. Yeah, that, that'll work into the algorithm. Yeah, yeah and that was where as for in, 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 in large entity like Denver is they have their own plumbing code. And so in 50s, they actually did can it themselves. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, we bought it the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, for sure. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so work is being done. We're not not doing well, anything, but you know, they were trying to get, just get, that get some kind of clarification before we go to the All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Does that include your big anything over? I think it's two inches. Enough you can just like you take off the list. Right.